I've determined my motor is not working it does not run so I've ordered a new fan and I'm going to show you the process to replace it okay just wanted to show you the um, fan mechanism and if you'll notice the fan blade is uh, down and let me uh, let me open it up and you will see that the motor is up above so that's the way it should be mounted when you uh, complete it fan down motor up okay remember that all right now let's go out and see what is required to uh, change this fan out it'll be all done from up above on the roof you don't have to do anything from below but you will need someone below to crank the vent up and down because there's a vent cover here and you can't quite open it far enough to uh, to be able to get to the back screws so uh, have somebody uh, available or you're just going to have to go off of the roof and back down to open up the um, the vent okay let's go out and look at the tools and materials required now before you begin make sure your power switch is in the off position because when you connect the motor the new motor you don't want it taken off and be in high speed or something or if you want to be on the safe side take the fuse out but if this is pointing to zero the fan will not come on uh, the new motor will not start I've uh, ordered the fantastic fan uh, motor assembly <clears throat> from eTrailer.com and this is what you get when you order one and uh, it comes uh, with the motor mounted to the frame and the um, the blades and two wires with connectors on them <clears throat> these are crimping uh, connectors that it takes a tool like this with the blue setting will do the ideal crimping once you stick the wire into the end uh, from cutting the old motor out you're going to leave a little pigtail there we're going to show all of this uh, actually up on the roof <clears throat> okay and here's the other things you're going to need is there's a 7 sixteenths uh, nut four of them that hold a vent cover on uh, over the um, uh, vent if you have that then you're going to need a 7 sixteenths uh, either socket open end box end whatever uh, if it's fairly new it's uh, it's easy to get off with a pair of pliers you're going to need a phillips screwdriver the number two uh, point and you're going to need a pair of cutters uh, to cut the wire from the existing motor there's an option if you don't have the proper tools like this you can't you're going to need a stripper and this has the stripper and the crimper built in it's not very much uh, at a hardware store you can get this you're going to be a, you're going to need to crimp this so you could use a pair of pliers but uh, you're not doing it uh, the way it was intended with a tool like this uh, that will give you a good connection so I would recommend getting one of these so you won't need this because you're going to strip it 18 gauge will uh, will strip the wire properly and uh, but if you didn't have this and want to go the other route you can use a box cutter and cut around the wire without cutting through the wire and then you can slip the insulation off so you're going to have to strip back some insulation i'll show that up there okay with this done we're going to have to get all of this material up on the roof i suggest a, a five gallon bucket or some sort of a bucket this will fit into a five gallon bucket just fine a rope and you can pull this all up safely from the top and get all your materials up at one time 
So look at uh, those options. You want to think safety now when you're up there. Okay, let's go up on the roof. Okay, we're on the roof and here is the vent cover uh, on the fan that we're going to replace. If you'll notice, the back is facing toward the back. This is the front of the motor home going out this way. So observe how the vent is placed on there because uh, if you install it wrong, it'll go on incorrectly, uh, but then you're not going to be able to open the vent up. So it'll save you a lot of time. Look at how it's on. Put it over to the side so you can put it back on in the exact same way. Okay, I've got my tools up in my five gallon bucket. I'm going to put this over to the side. Pull out my tools. My first tool is 7 sixteenths and you just loosen them. I've already had this off so uh, to get these off you have to kind of hold the nut a little bit either from underneath and it'll come off and then your washer and take all four of them off. Gail you want to open it up all the way? Open it up. There you go. Uh, this is a ground over here the ground connection and you'll notice that there's a light colored, uh, cream colored wire and an orange wire. On ours, it's going to be black and red. So the way the colors work is black is going to go to the ground and red is your hot wire. This is the hot wire here. Let me say one thing right now. You don't have to worry about getting electrocuted. This is all DC voltage. It's like changing the batteries in a flashlight, about as safe as that. You can't get electrocuted on DC. Now, uh, some of you may have thought that these are AC or didn't know the difference, but it's a DC. Uh, the battery voltage uh, on this lead is coming from the coach battery, which is 12 volts. Okay, and you could, with a voltmeter, test this and make sure that you do have uh, 12 volts on here. Uh, I know that I do, uh, and that will be part of your troubleshooting to determine if you really need to change this out or is there an electrical problem like a fuse. All right, now what you'd wanna do is take your cutters and you would cut these wires right at that point and Leave yourself enough. You could even li a little bit more because you're going to have to strip it back and then we'll pull this one out. Okay, and so this is the old motor and I, I don't have to be too careful with it. Uh, you could give yourself as much wire as you think you want, but you've got to coil it back around. Notice these little things right here is what holds the wire uh, into the uh, arm. So you just pull up on this and watch it'll fall down in there and then you have to fish around so pull this one and they'll come off and we're on the new motor we're going to route it down like that okay now there's four screws here right here okay we're going to take those four screws out with our screwdriver and we just start right here and go now i'm not going to make you watch this I'm going to take them all four out and then come back and you see where the four are. We're ready to um, take the motor out. I've got all four screws are laying down here and I just lift this up and the new one, the old one is a little tight in there, but it will come out with a little persuasion. Put her over to the side and notice how it came out. The motor is up top. You would not want to, let me just show you, it will go in just like that. And you could bolt it in like that, but it would be wrong. So you don't want it this way, okay? So again, we're ready to install the motor and <clears throat> you don't want to put it this way, just as I showed. You want to lay it in here like this. And another thing you want to do is have the wires coming out this side. The way this works is 
this and you see you have plenty of, of wire and later we're going to pop this in here but before we do we're going to connect the hot lead of the motor to the hot lead of the coach for the fan circuit now what we want to do is we want to put this wire in so that we come up to this point so you need to kind of put it like that we need to maybe cut off a little bit more about like that you don't want any of this wire showing past this so keep that in mind and this is a one-time use uh, so if you get it if you crimp it before you get it right then you're going to have to get a new one so let's make sure it's right all right so now you need your your uh, stripping tool for the folks that don't have one of these and want to use this you would go around by cutting in to the wire all the way around and then you could slide that off okay but this is really easier and you don't want to you want to hold this wire from and when you strip it and not uh, pull on it so hold it firmly and I'm going to put it just about like that I'm just going to give it a little bit more and if I get too much I can cut the wire off so you just kind of rock it around ah there and then twist these now if we get too much wire sticking out we can just trim this off at the end but you got to start somewhere And make sure you got her good and trimmed. And it'll go right down in that hole. There's a hole down in there of the metal. And see, I just push down and push down firmly. Okay, and I don't have anything showing and that's the way you want to do it. Then you take your crimping tool on the blue opening and you put it over about halfway down and I'm on the blue and then I squeeze hard and then that should it should be good okay now we do the same thing over here and again with the blue I put it over the top of that I'm gonna do it this way so I can see and let you see it Okay, get about halfway down there and then squeeze. <clears throat> okay, if you did it right, it shouldn't pull loose. And uh, don't wiggle it around though, but uh, just give it a firm pull. If it doesn't come out, then you're good. Okay. Okay, Gail. Yeah. Uh, turn the uh, switch on to the first speed. Ah, voila. And I feel the air. Okay, the second speed. Third speed. That is a nice sound, my friend. Okay, turn her all the way off. Oh, it's a good thing. It was pulling my hair right up out of here. Uh-oh. Listen at that. It's strong. <laughs> okay, this is going to work. Now I can finish my installation by putting the four screws in there and then we'll we'll secure the wires okay um, I don't think you need to stick around for me to put a screw in each of these mounting locations so I'll come back in a moment all right now we're going to just pull this around actually we're going to get this in here close and put it right in the center like that and then we can just kind of pull this around over to the side and then same way with this one we pop her in there and put your little clip on there and it just holds it holds the wire down and then you can just kind of bend him down so so he's not going to get in there that's just fine and that it's not going to interfere with the uh with the lid okay 
so that'll work good and that's tight everything is tight so now before we can put the cover on uh, the vent cover we need to lower this a little bit gail okay. uh, lower the vent uh, cover a little bit okay. to almost close not all the way closed on further see i can see where i gotta go on a little further right there stop okay that's enough so that she can turn the power on and we can be sure everything's going to work after we finish now what we want to do is put this on correctly and notice this is the direction it should go and you just line it up with the bolts all the way around okay now with your 7 sixteenths you want to put the washer on first and then the nut and do this all for all four once all four nuts are on with the washers you can tighten these up go around to the other side do the same thing and she's complete gail turn the uh, fan on now okay okay open it all the way up okay it's coming out good so we've got a successful installation and you saw how easy it is you can do it and uh, you will have great success i'm sure and uh, you'll be happy okay thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you the next time you need something installed again i got this from etrailer.com and they have a whole bunch of supplies and the speedy delivery was great it uh, came within a few days and uh, they were great to work with okay so i'm happy thank you watch it